it was provided across the land. I didn't see anything about that on there. Um, so we're just trying to understand it a little bit better. Uh, that was the first thing. Um, um, so I don't know if you can, if there's anything that you can direct us to, or maybe that we can help help us better understand it. There's the Idaho code. Okay. Okay. It says when you're arrested, you must complete the booking process. Okay. That means a mug shot, fingerprints, and those types of things. And you can be held in jail until you get that completed. You can be released only by a magistrate judge or a district judge. Okay. So that's what we're doing. Part of the booking process is when, once you fill out that booking form, you're given a PIN number. And so you can use your phone. You have access to all these different things. You can visit with people. And she just will not cooperate. It's a simple booking photo and fingerprints. And then she'll have all of the rights just as anybody else does. But until then, we can't give her that because we don't. It's just some of the things that, that comes with the booking process. And so if she'll, and I know Mama, and so maybe I need to talk to her, but if she'll just complete the photo, fingerprints, and the judge would have released her on Thursday, or actually the, the officer that arrested her, from what I understand, give her the opportunity to just be cited and released if she would just go through the booking process. So, yeah, I didn't mean to interrupt you. Yeah. Yeah. So basically what you're saying, I mean, you sound like a straightforward guy. Right. Okay. And basically what you're saying is this law needs to be rewritten. Rewritten. Well, it was written in 99, way before any right, of the, right. the federal stuff that's right. going on there. May I have a copy of this? Yeah, yeah you can have Thank that. you so much. So this is, and it says 19, I guess the last, 1863 was a revision, and you got, I don't have my glass, in 1999 was the last one. Right. So they're using two laws, okay, that are antiquated, that don't apply to the, that is holding you back for letting her go. I, that's... So, so, so you're doing your job, right? So, who makes these decisions? It's the legislative. And you, who's your boss? The legislative, the people. commissioners. No, the people of the citizens of Fayette County. I'm elected, right? right? Okay. I don't have a boss, right? So you, 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 you do whatever you, you took that to do, right? Keep up the good work, man. But I don't know what to tell you on that. So, how do you fix a problem like this, and what do you suggest as an answer? Well, I think that you need to go to your legislators, right? And you need to tell them that you don't agree with this. Section five. Yeah. Idaho Code twenty dash six zero one. Right. And change number five. Yeah. They can certainly. I mean, they have that. That's their authority to yes, to make laws and to vote on. Them. Right. And so, but I'm bound by state statute. Right. When to there's laws, books I have to do. Yeah. I'd be more than happy to get her out of I don't want her back here. Well, nobody does. You know? Yeah. And so it was just a there's two things we're missing because we have all of her information. We just need her mugshot. Why can't you take the mugshot? She's gotta just walk up and be behind the board, the green board. And she won't do it. Mm -hmm. You can't put her in a wheelchair and bring her? What well, happens if they're incapacitated? This is the thing the judge ordered her today to comply. And so what that means, I, I am real hesitant to get involved with that. Right. Yeah. Right. And so I don't want to go hands on with her and physically take her picture and physically take her fingerprints. Right. Although the judge has the authority to mandate that. Mandate that. And right. make me do it. Right. Or make one of my deputies do it. Right. Right. And so I would love to talk to her and I may just go back and visit with her and just yeah. say, well, just cooperate. Just take the picture because you're not going to get out of jail until, until you do. Is or until the judge releases you. So what do you, what, what, where do you see the crystal ball a week from now? She can still be here? Um, yeah, if she doesn't comply. Okay. And, and I think the judge made it a point because she wouldn't answer any of the questions today. And so it went from a $600 bond to a $10,000 right. bond. So I mean, it's really, it's in the judge's hands. Right. And, uh, so we're just trying to accommodate her the best we can. Right. And, and you, if you talk to her, from what I understand, uh, she's made, Statements that she's been treated very well, okay. and that's what I expect from my deputies. Right. Sure. Sheriff, can I just ask you another question? Sure. Um, has she actually officially been charged? Yes, she has been. What, what was she charged with? Uh, I believe it was trespass and obstruct or resisting arrest. And, and 
It was in this building that she was charged with? Yes. Is this a public building or is this a private it's building? public building. I'm just trying to understand how you can trespass in a public building. It just doesn't make sense. You can if you are um, disrupting some kind of meeting or some kind of flow of things. Like, for example, her daughter is hanging out. A little bit ago, was causing a disruption in the courthouse. Mm -hmm. We have the authority to ask people to leave if you're, if you're causing a problem. You know, I mean, it makes sense, right? Mm -hmm. You can't go to a grocery store and cause a problem if you be asked to leave. You can't go to a federal, federal building or a post office or any kind of governmental building cause a scene mm -hmm. and expect to stay there. Sure. Um, and I'm assuming since you know Holly here, you're familiar with what's happening with um, House Bill 464 and how what, what the state is imposing on people, whether they want to or not, whether they own their mineral rights or not, they're forcing people to allow an oil company to come and control people's land. Yeah, I, you know, I'm not too involved in that because, to be honest with you, for whatever reason, I'm just not that involved. So I know I know what her, her passion is, and I get it. Uh, and it's, to be, you know, it's, I, I gotta give it to her. I mean, she's going after it hard and heavy, and, and that's her passion, and I'm okay with that. Everybody has that. Mm -hmm. um, but to me, I just, it's just not that big of an issue for me. Sure. And yeah. I have bigger things to worry right. about than, than that. Yeah. Sure, sure, Pat, going back and ask a question like this. If you was a citizen, mm -hmm. I am a citizen. Uh, 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 if, 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 how, would, how would a citizen go to, to uh, uh, bring charges against county officials and, and, um, and, and the county prosecutor, okay, uh, Bert Osborne, who's the city. He's a city prosecutor. Well, city, whatever, prosecutor, okay, okay uh, for um, conflict of interest and, and overall meeting. Uh, and how do you file that complaint? You'd have to file through the attorney general's office. So you file a complaint with the attorney general in Payette County? Yeah, on Payette County. On but Payette you County. file it through the attorney general's right. office. Gotcha. Because I don't have any. The state, right? Here, right, saying, yeah. Okay. In Boise. Gotcha. Yeah. And let them. Lawrence Wasman. Right, I did. Okay. I've already done that. Okay. I didn't add another charge, but that's it. And let them handle it. Right. Very good. They have investigators and they investigate. Gotcha. Yeah. So don't deal with the locals. Oh, yeah, there's not much we can do. I mean, right. you know what I mean? It's a conflict of interest. It is. It is. <laughs> so we would have to conflict it out, and then uh, most people are going to say, whoa, whoa, whoa. Right. The state police may get involved. Right. Because they do a lot of conflict right. cases. And sure, sure, have you heard of the CSPOA? Sorry, I, I know you're a busy guy, uh, but have you heard of the CSPOA before? Constitutional Sheriffs? Mm -hmm. Yes. Are you a member? No, but I've attended their meetings. Okay, what do you think about the meetings? Um, I would say the majority of, of the meetings I was uh, very in favor of. Um, I went to the one in Vegas. I, I think the second day got a little, you know, maybe a little too far out there for me. But for the most part, I believe in that. I believe in that. I, I am considering myself a constitutional sheriff. I don't have to be part of an organization to consider myself a, sure. a constitutional sheriff because that's what we're, um, yeah. we're in the Idaho Constitution. The sheriff is a constitutional position. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, I'm, I'm just not going to get involved in an organization but sure. like that. But Would you think that because you're, your boss are the people, you're your own boss and, and the people hired you to do a job, and you swore up to defend the Constitution, if you saw a law that was not in line with the Constitution, would you think that it's your right and duty to either choose to enforce that law or not enforce that law, or do you think that you have to enforce it because I think that's the law? I've, I've been asked that question many times. It's a slippery slope. Mm -hmm. Until you're sitting here and you want to be a one-term sheriff, you know what I mean? Those those things are you're, you're always thinking about. Mm -hmm. I'm, I have, outside the Constitution, I'm also bound by laws. Mm -hmm. That's where somebody can be charged with a crime. Mm -hmm. It's not, for example, you can't be charged with violating the Constitution. You can be charged with a crime, a crime that's that's supposed to be within the envelope of the Constitution. You know what I'm saying? And so, um, 1983 violations, which are, which is a violation of the U.S. Constitution, mm -hmm. or violation of our Fourth Amendment rights or Fifth Amendment rights or whatever. Mm -hmm. um, those are charged by federal agents, not by the county sheriff. I can't charge you with a 1983 violation because I don't enforce federal law. But is, so, is the Constitution the supreme law of the land? It is. It is. As well as the state constitution. Yeah. 
And, and the state constitution is it's very, not, it's very not the law of the land. It's it's what governs everybody. But you have to have a law before you can be charged with a crime. You just can't just because you violate somebody's Fourth Amendment rights, it's not a crime. By I can't charge you with violating somebody's Fourth Amendment right. You know what I'm saying? Now, if you violate a law that's made within the envelope of the Fourth Amendment, then I can charge you with that crime. Okay. Do you understand what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. No, I didn't. Sure. One last question. Okay. Uh, Dallas Road. Yes. All the way across Falk Bridge. Yep. Back over where the hall and granted is hauling gravel out. Yep. Okay. That road got mighty slippery on the corners. The, the, the corners are all broken up now. When I go around there on the motorcycle, I slide out. Okay. When the gravel's being drug out because the big long trailers can't make the corner and there's cars coming around the other side. Yep. And the speed limit that's coming down through there is 35 miles an hour. I wouldn't mind if you made it 25. Okay. Well, I, I wish I could. Or in first grade, I don't have the authority to change that. Okay. And, 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 and between the, when they haul the gravel out, and I ain't saying who, okay. from that hillside, and down across the bridge, okay, and down there's quite a few stop and yield signs, including two at the railroad tracks, they aren't being followed. Okay. I appreciate your presence. Yeah. Thank you, sir. Okay. Thank you, sir.